welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, an Orange Pi Zero 2W. And as you can probably guess, this is a single board computer with a Raspberry Pi Zero form factor, and it's also got a quad core processor, and this particular model has got 4 gigabytes of RAM. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Orange Pi Zero 2W, which I purchased for $31.99 from Amazon.com. And what we have here is technically the Orange Pi Zero 2W 4G. I think we'll find that printed on the back of the label. There it is. And this is because this is the 4 gigabyte version of the board. But there's also a 2 gigabyte version, and that sells for $26.99. And there's also a 1.5 gigabyte version, no, there really is, for $23.99. And also a 1 gigabyte version for $19.99. So let's open this up. Simple box, we we'll just uh, go inside. I haven't looked, I always like to get the surprise of the. Uh, oh, the GPIO connector is a. Uh, supplied but separate as we can see and uh, this is the board itself the bag is the bag is sealed we'll have to bring in mr scissors to open up the bag let's get inside like uh, that and uh, here we are all the antennas pre-connected as well very exciting this is our brand new single board computer and just before we turn to the specification let's compare it to some of its sbc friends and over here we have a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and the Radsa Zero 3W that we looked at on the channel a few weeks ago. So let's put our new Orange Pi down between them. There we go. And clearly all three of these boards have got the same form factor and they've also all got a quad core system on a chip. But all models of the Orange Pi and the Radsa Zero have got more RAM than you can get on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. As we can see, like the Aradsa board, the Orange Pi Zero 2W uses USB-C connectors rather than micro USB for its power and data. Although, like the Raspberry Pi, it's got a mini rather than a micro HDMI connector. And so, in my view, the Orange Pi Zero 2W offers the best set of physical connectors. Next, let's also make a comparison to this board, which is the Orange Pi Zero 2 without a W on the end. And this is a board I reviewed on the channel a couple of years ago, and it's a very cool low-cost SBC from Orange Pi with a 53 times 60 millimeter form factor. So putting our new 02W down next to it is a little bit confusing because the lack of a W in a name would normally signal the same board but with no wireless connectivity. Although here both of these boards have got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. However, the difference clearly is that the 02W has got a standard zero form factor and it's also got a standard 40 pin GPIO layout. The 02W is also available with more RAM because the 02 is limited to one gigabyte. Although the 02 is a very interesting board. We just turn it round, you'll see as you probably suspected, it has got an ethernet port on the board. It's also got a full size USB 2 port and it's also got connectivity for two more USB 2 ports and composite video and audio on this 13-pin uh, header. And so both of these boards are rather interesting, although right now we're going to turn our attention completely to the new Orange Pi Zero 2W. At the heart of the Zero 2W lies an all-winner 8618 system on a chip. This contains four ARM Cortex-A53 cores clocked at up to 1.5 GHz, as well as a Mali G31 MP2 GPU. Next to the SoC, we then have our low-power DDR4 RAM, here 4 GB, and next to that, a microSD card slot. In front of all these, we then have pads for a 40-pin GPIO header. We could solder on the header it came with the board, and then on the other side of the 8616, we have a wireless module that supports Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 
and this is paired with a connector for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna that comes attached to the board. Turning to wired connectivity, as noted earlier, we have a mini HDMI connector. This is 2.0 and supports 4K output at up to 60 frames a second. And we also have two USB-C ports, the first of which offers USB 2 data connectivity, and the second is used to power the board with a 5V 2 amp power supply being required. If we turn the board over, I'm sure it won't mind, Underneath our level of excitement is limited, although we do have a 16 megabyte SBI NOR flash chip. However, if we flip the board back the right way up again, I'm sure it's relieved about that, we can see down here the last thing I haven't mentioned, I'm sure you have actually noticed it, and this is what Orange Pi describe as a 24 pin function interface. And this turns our excitement dial back up to 11 as it contains connectors for two more USB 2 ports, 100 megabit Ethernet, an IR receiver, an audio output, a composite video output, a power button, and two user-defined buttons. And if you're wondering how could all of these be connected up, Orange Pi sell an expansion board that looks like this, and which enables a rather smart little system to be built with loads of connectivity and a rather novel form factor. And so there we are, the Orange Pi Zero 2W. And I think it's now high time to grab a microSD card. I'm going to use this SanDisk Extreme Pro, which I'm now going to image with an operating system. Greetings. Here I am back again with everything connected up. And we're now booting into Ubuntu 2204 with an XFC desktop. And this is not my first boot. I have gone in and made a few scaling changes so things read better on video, as I always do. But other than that, you're seeing exactly what you get with a clean install of this operating system for the Orange Pi Zero 2W. And uh, here we are arrived on the desktop. Very clearly we're on an Orange Pi. And what we have here is a pretty responsive Linux distro running on this hardware. If we go to the menu, you'll see that it's uh, very responsive here. Things are running just... Uh, Nice and fluidly. It really is impressive, isn't it? A small board like this can run a, a nice fluid distro. And in terms of what we have here, this is a fairly minimal installation. We've got the usual settings, lots of those, a few accessories, not much else pre-installed. We've got Chromium browser, we've got VLC media player. We don't have an office package in the uh, default image. We do have various system tools and things, including the system monitor. So uh, let's just run that up and we can see our uh, four processor cores, not currently very busy. And we've got about, what, uh, two-thirds of a gigabyte of memory being used as we are idling along, just running the system monitor. Let's run up the uh, browser, see what's going on there. Internet and a Chromium browser. And this comes up reasonably quickly. Remember, we're running from micro SD card here. It won't be massively fast, but this isn't too bad. There we are, arriving in a Chromium. Come on, Chromium, you can do it. There it is. We're on the Explaining Computers website. I'll have to add this board to the other ARM SBC reviews, won't I? It'll go in somewhere over here with uh, all these boards. And let's just take a look at the Orange Pi Zero 2W's own web page. I've got that somewhere here in bookmarks, and uh, there it is. Always good when a board can look at its own web page. Very nice. And uh, if we look at downloads here, we can see all the software available. And there's quite a lot made available for this board. All of the official images are here. Uh, Orange Pi OS, uh, Ubuntu, Debian, Android, etc., as you can see. And in fact, there's lots of options inside these. So, for example, if I click on Ubuntu image, as we're running right now, it'll take us out to Google Drive where the images are stored. We can choose a version based on either Linux kernel 6.1 or 5.4. Here we're running 6.1. But if we go into that, you'll see we have versions of the different boards in terms of the memory they have. And inside there, we then get options to run either a server version or a version with a desktop. That's the one we're running here. If we take a look at the uh, GPU situation here in the browser, let's go back to the bookmarks. There we are, and to Chrome GPU internals. You'll see that we don't have hardware acceleration. We're not using the GPU to play things in the browser. That's a bit of a shame, and it won't be therefore surprised you to learn that this board doesn't have good streaming media playback, at least with this particular Linux install. But uh, I'll just prove it to you because I always do. Let's just nip down to my sample 1080p clip and we'll speed on through until it's playing full screen. 
And here we are, a bit of a struggle there to convince this board to play YouTube full screen, but uh, here we are. And in fact, it's not doing that badly. It is dropping frames as we can see, even now it's settled, but it's not a, it's not stunningly bad playback, if you see what I mean, better than we've seen on many single board computers in the past. But anyway, let's now check out a few other operating systems. Right, here I am back again, and we're now booting into Orange Pi OS, which is the native operating system for the Orange Pi boards. And it's based on Arch Linux, although it's also pretty friendly. Here, for example, are the setup screens you see on first boot, so it uh, does try and guide the user through. And if we go back to real time, we just need to uh, log in like uh, that. There we go. And let's just give the machine a bit of encouragement to finish the boot. Come on, you can do it. Get us to the desktop. It's having a think, isn't it? You've got to encourage small single board computers. I need a bit of vocal assistance. And here we are, we've arrived properly on the desktop. Well, as you can see, by default, we get this orange pie hello screen with various help. Although I think for now, I will turn this off. As in Ubuntu, we've got a fairly minimal install here. We go down to the menu, you'll see we've got uh, accessories as we had previously but not many actual end user programs pre-installed. Obviously we've got settings, systems, things like that. And we've got the browser here. We've got the Chromium browser as we had in Ubuntu. Let's just launch the Chromium browser. Again, we'll give it encouragement. Come on, Chromium browser, you can launch for us. It'll get there in a second, won't it? There we are, things are happening. Isn't computing a wonderful thing? And as you can see, we've arrived back on the Explaining Computers website. And I'll also here just take you, I've got bookmarks, the Chrome internals, look at a GPU acceleration, and it's exactly the same situation we saw in Ubuntu, so there's no point in me trying out things like a YouTube here. And more fundamentally, it's important to point out there are some serious stability issues here in Orange Pi OS. For example, if I click to launch the terminal, or I click to go into home or file system in the file manager, this system will hang. So let me demonstrate this to you like this. We'll click on home. There we are. We now have a black screen. And sometimes the system comes back, sometimes it doesn't. It seems to have gone into some form of sleep. But to be honest, I don't really care. This should not happen when we open the file manager. And if we use the magic of filmmaking to get back to the desktop, we can go down to the menu and let's try and launch the terminal. The same thing will happen as we can see if I click like this. There we are. And so Orange Pi OS is not an operating system I would recommend running on the Orange Pi 02W at this time. Guess what? We're now booting into Android. It's very exciting. And we get the all with a logo on the screen here during the Android boot to remind us of the SOC in the board. We don't get the standard Android animation, but that doesn't matter because here we are on an Android desktop. And this is a minimal install of Android. There isn't much pre-installed. If we look, for example, over here, we can see things like settings, go into a device settings down there, device preferences, lots of things available to set like that. Let's go back with my mouse. And there are a few apps pre-installed, but they're very much the minimum basic things. We don't get YouTube. We certainly don't get the Play Store, but we do have some basic stuff. And there's one thing I do want to point out here, because we do get up here wiring OP, wiring Orange Pi. And wiring OP is the utility you use normally in a Linux distro to control the GPIO pins on an Orange Pi board. So if we run this up like that, if I get it right, there we are, we can do various tests as you can see. We've got, for example, a GPIO test at the top, and this can blink LEDs connected to all of the GPIO pins on the board. And I've yet to solder a header to my Orange Pi 02W, but I've done this little lash up here with an LED connected by various means. And so if I click on Blink or GPIO, yes, the LED is blinking. Isn't the blinking of an LED still the most exciting thing we ever do in the whole world of computing? I think it is. And in particular here, I find it very interesting to be controlling GPIO pins here in Android. And this is something I might return to in a future video. It's beyond the scope of this video to take this any further, but there are certainly many interesting possibilities presented here for Android GPIO control.
the Orange Pi Zero 2W is a nice piece of hardware. And therefore, as is so often the case, it all comes down to software support. And here, software support, I think, isn't as good as it is, for example, for the Orange Pi 5 or the Orange Pi 800, but it's better than we find for some other Orange Pi board. And I think there are lots of exciting project possibilities with this SBC. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.